Today we're going to talk about fertilization. As you should know by now, if you've been paying attention, sexual reproduction happens in animals when a sperm cell, or the male sex cell, comes into contact with the female sex cell, the eggs, and a fertilized egg starts to grow into a new offspring. Now this process sounds pretty straightforward, however there's kind of a setback. These sex cells are very delicate, meaning that they're pretty weak and they need to be protected in order for fertilization to occur. So how do animals solve this problem? Well, most amphibians and most fish solve this problem by releasing their sex cells into water whether that water be ponds, rivers, or even in some cases oceans. These animals need water. One such example of an animal that does this kind of reproduction process is our good friend, the salmon. Now, the salmon swims upstream to spawn, and when this happens, the female salmon actually digs a hole into the gravel on the bottom of a riverbed and drops off her eggs outside of her body. Now, this kind of fertilization is called external fertilization, and with external fertilization, again, the eggs are outside of the female's body, and the male salmon comes along in this case and tries to deposit sperm onto those eggs. So the fertilization actually happens outside of the female bo female's body, therefore it is external fertilization. Now, external fertilization may sound great in theory, however there are some catch catches. External fertilization is a very high-risk process because oceans and lakes and rivers, they have a lot of water. And the chances of those sperm cells finding and fertilizing eggs, uh, they drop off quite a bit. Also, there's a lot of hungry predators that like to gobble up all of those sex cells. So... External fertilization is also not a very accurate process, meaning because there's so much water, it's harder for those sperm cells to find and fertilize the eggs. Now you may be wondering, well, why in the heck would any animal try to reproduce this way if there's so many things that are holding, <clears throat> that can go wrong? Um, and the answer is that, well, since the animals are releasing so many eggs at one time, that also increases the chances that at least some of them are going to be fertilized. And that's a good thing. Okay, cool, but not all animals are amphibians or fish, so how do other animals reproduce and fertilize their eggs? Well, that brings us to the second kind of fertilization. Internal fertilization. And internal fertilization is fertilization that happens inside of a female. Internal fertilization is useful for animals that live on land and in dry conditions because otherwise, like I said, those sex cells, they would dry up, they would die because they are very weak. And things that are too weak tend to die. And if the sex cells die, fertilization never happens. And if fertilization never happens, then the animal and their species, they do not reproduce, and they eventually die off, which is a bad thing. 
So, in internal fertilization, it happens, fertilization that is, happens inside the mother. Now, why would they do this? Well, a couple reasons. First, and probably most importantly, those sex cells get that protection that they need. Because they're weak, remember? So they get the protection from being actually inside the mother, and they're protected from also drying out from the desert-like conditions. And by desert, I mean desert to these sex cells, meaning very dry. They can't survive. Also, we have less eggs that need to be produced since it's a much more accurate method of fertilization. So, just to quickly recap. There are two main kinds of fertilization. There's external fertilization, where fertilization takes place outside of the mother. Usually this takes place in some body of water. And it's not a very accurate process, so much more eggs need to be produced. And then you have internal fertilization, where fertilization takes place inside of the mother. Usually this happens with land animals. It is more accurate, so the need for less eggs. And it offers a lot more protection from predators that may eat those weak little sex cells, and also um, harsh environments. So, there you go. Two types of fertilization, external and internal.